You know, ironically enough, when a brewery puts out a beer that says beer that tastes like beer, rarely is it a good beer. If you've ever thought about running your own servers for home or business use, but don't want to deal with the headaches of maintaining hardware, why not let Linode host your services for you? They make it simple to deploy and manage your own cloud infrastructure, with solutions ranging from a single shared CPU to massive multi-core virtual machines. You can even add in dedicated enterprise GPUs for machine learning. Linode also recently started rolling out high-speed NVMe block storage to all 11 of their global data centers. Best of all, storage rates will remain at the same low price they always have been. With shared CPU plans starting at as little as $5 per month and scaling up to as high as you need to go, you'll be able to find a hosting plan that fits your needs. They also have 24-7, 365 support available, regardless of your plan size. That's a better support plan than I have on my personal server rack, I can tell you that much. Visit linode.com slash craft computing and get a $100 60-day credit just for signing up for a new account. That's linode.com slash craft computing. And thanks to Linode for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. One of the most difficult aspects of running a complicated network and a rack full of servers is keeping everything under control. That means documentation of what services are running, which services are responsible for which tasks, and keeping a close eye on the overall health of all of your hardware. I've used a wide variety of tools in the past, both personally and professionally, to help achieve that goal. Today, I'm going to show you an open source option in Observium, walk you through getting it installed on your hardware, as well as what you should be looking for when monitoring your network health. First off, what is a network health monitor? Basically, it's a self-hosted application that keeps tabs on any service, hardware, or activity that you want to keep an eye on. These can be simple things like CPU or memory utilization on servers, bandwidth monitoring, or hardware health. You can also get as granular as you'd like, with monitors for individual system processes, customized alerts, error reporting, and even inventory management. The most universal way to monitor these things is through the use of SNMP, or Simple Network Management Protocol. This is a service that runs on nearly every network-connected system, regardless of the hardware or software used. Windows, Linux, Mac, network switches, printers, access control systems, smart home devices, pretty much everything under the sun will have at least some support for this protocol. Observium uses SNMP to monitor and log network health and activity, allowing you to find problems on your network. And if I learned anything being a systems administrator, it's that it's impossible to identify a problem on your network if you don't even know what normal activity looks like on your network. Using network monitoring solutions like Observium will help you with both. First off, let's go ahead and get Observium installed. Today, I'm going to be installing it onto an Ubuntu server VM, but you could just as easily run this in a Docker or container if you'd like. I just always prefer running a full fat VM if I have the available resources to do so. In my case, I gave the VM six CPU cores, eight gigabytes of memory, and 60 gigabytes of storage. And even that is likely overkill for this particular service. Installation is very straightforward with an automated installation script available directly from Observium. You can find the link to the install guide down in the video description, but it really is as simple as running a wget command to download the script, using chmod to make it executable, and then running the installer. You're going to want to select option 1 to install the free community edition unless you have a paid license. During the installation process, just follow the prompts to configure MySQL, as well as your initial username and password to access the admin console. The script will take care of installing the Apache web server as well as the rest of the dependencies. All in all, it took less than 5 minutes to go from 0 to logging into Observium on my server. Once installed, you'll want to open up a web browser and type in either the IP address or the fully qualified domain name of your Observium server. Once you log in with the credentials you created during the install, you'll be greeted by the dashboard. When you have all of your devices configured, this will provide you with the health and status information of your entire network at a glance. But before we get there, you'll need to tell it what devices you want Observium to keep an eye on. Again, for today's tutorial, I'll be setting up a couple servers with SNMP, one on Linux and another on Windows. SNMP is not the only protocol you can use to keep an eye on things, but it will give you all the basics you need to get started. On the Linux side of things, I'm going to go ahead and set up monitoring of my Pi-hole server, which is running in its own Ubuntu VM. Log into your server and run an apt update to make sure all your repos are up to the latest versions. After that, run apt install snmpd. This is a very small package, barely over 100 kilobytes in size, so the install will be done before this sentence is. To allow Observium to monitor the server, we just need to make a quick change to the SNMP configuration. 
Type in sudo nano slash etc slash snmp slash snmpd.conf. By default, the only system allowed to request SNMP information is the local host and only on the loopback address. Now, the line below that one is commented out by default, and it's for listening on all interfaces via IPv4 or IPv6. If that sounds good to you, go ahead and just remove the comment tag on this line. Alternatively, you can enter a specific local IP address to listen to on that interface only. Next up, we're going to set up the community tag for SNMP version 2C. Think of the community as a shared secret between Observium and the Pi-hole server or any other device that you want to monitor. Each community can have its own access rights, which are defined locally on the monitored device. Now, this is not nearly as secure as the newer SNMP version 3, which has user-based authentication. But for home networks, this will usually do just fine. Now, I am going to cover SNMP version 3 later in this video, so check out the chapters if you want to just skip ahead to that. For home users, if you're planning on monitoring devices outside of your local network, SNMP version 3 is an absolute must, as version 2 traffic transmits completely unencrypted. This goes doubly for any business networks, both internal or external. Now, I don't want to hear about anyone configuring SNMP version 2 in a business environment or transmitting that traffic over the web. Got it? Scroll down to the access control section of the configuration file and look for the RO community lines. This is where you configure both the community name and permitted sources to request SNMP data from the server. You can also define what permissions a community member has on the server right here. For right now, I'm going to set up a community name of Craft at Home and allow connections only from the Observium IP address. You can also set this up over IPv6 if you prefer. With those two lines configured, you can save the file and exit out. To apply changes is as easy as restarting the SNMPD service, so sudo system control restart SNMPD. With the Pi-hole server all set up, head back over to the Observium web interface. At the top of the window, go to the Devices menu and click on Add Device. Under Hostname, you can enter either the server name, fully qualified domain name, or the IP address of the device you'd like to monitor. In my case, we're just going to enter the IP address of 10.0.0.10. To the right of that, just type in the SNMP community name, so craft at home. Then go ahead and click on add device. If the setup was successful, you should see a confirmation banner appear. If you get an error, check out both the host name and community name that you entered into Observium, and make sure you can at least ping the device that you're trying to connect to. If that all looks correct, go back to the Linux device and verify the settings on the client end. Now let's take a look at getting SNMP set up on a Windows server using my Windows deployment VM. To install SNMP, head over to the Server Manager and click on Add Roles and Features. Click on Next until you arrive at the Features menu, then scroll down until you see SNMP Service. Click the checkbox next to it and allow Windows to install all the dependencies needed. Then click on Install. To configure SNMP, we'll go into the Services Management Console and scroll down to the SNMP Service. The Security tab is what we're interested in here. And just like in Linux, this is where you define the community names and the allowed hosts. Since we're using SNMP version 2, you'll also want to disable the Send Authentication trap. And if everything looks correct, go ahead and click on OK. With that done, I'm going to tell Observium to keep an eye on this server. And this time I'll do it by machine name, just to show you a different way of doing it. So craft-wds-2019, enter the community name, and click on Add Device. Just like before, you should see the confirmation banner show up, and if not, go back and recheck your work. Observium is what's known as an auto-polling SNMP server, meaning that you don't have to go into each device that you're monitoring and tell it to keep an eye on CPU utilization or how much RAM you have left. Rather, it will keep an eye on all SNMP sensors that are available and start populating them into graphs. Within about 10 minutes of adding a device to Observium, you should see all of the sensors start to populate and get a good idea of what the server is actually doing. Now again, while SNMP version 2 is usually fine for a home network, it is just a plain text protocol with no encryption. While most of the data sent is fairly innocuous, it is still best practice to encrypt any management traffic in flight on a business network, or if you plan on monitoring devices over a WAN connection. Setting up SNMP version 3 is slightly more intensive, as there are three items used for setting up user authentication. First is obviously the username, second is the user password, and third is the cryptography password used as a passkey to encrypt and decrypt on each side of the transmission. 
For Linux, there are a total of three packages we'll need to grab. So again, we're going to do a sudo apt update, followed by sudo apt install snmp, snmpd, and lib snmp-dev. Just like our setup for version 2C in Linux, we'll need to allow connections from outside the local host. So open up the snmpd configuration file and uncomment the line to listen on all interfaces. We'll also need to enable SNMP version 3 authentication for read-only access. Scroll down to the full read-only access for SNMP version 3 line and add in user admin followed by an IP address range, where admin is the user we're going to create and the IP range is your local area network. If setting this up for a WAN connection, you'll need to allow from your remote IP address or configure forwarding from your firewall. Every setup will be different, so I'm not going to cover that here. And now for the really fun part, creating the user account and crypto password. This is one long command, so I do recommend copy and pasting it from the link down in the video description. Don't forget to change the username, password, and cryptography password when pasting this in though. Once you've done that, you'll want to restart the SNMPD service again using system control. With your user set up, we're ready to add this server to Observia. Just like before, click on Add Device and enter in either the IP address or the device name. This time, we're going to change the SNMP version to version 3. On the right side, select Auth Privilege for the authentication level and type in the username and password you set just a moment ago. Under Authentication Algorithm, select MD5. Enter the cryptography password and select AES for the crypto algorithm. And finally, click on Add Device. If successful, you should again see the success banner appear and your device successfully added to the dashboard. While it is true that you can use SNMP version 2C in Windows, Microsoft has never officially implemented SNMP version 3 into their operating systems and has actually depreciated SNMP altogether. It is still available to install and use, even in Server 2019 and 2022, as well as Windows 10 and 11. But it does seem unlikely that there will ever be an official version 3 solution. Instead, Microsoft has been trying to move on to WMI or Windows Management Instrumentation if you need something more powerful than just SNMP version 2. Just like SNMP, WMI is a fairly robust monitoring solution, but is designed to integrate much deeper into Windows as an operating system. WMI is supported on all Windows operating systems from 7 on up, as well as on Server 2012 and higher. To use WMI, you'll need to add the WMI client to Observium from the PacketFence website. Again, commands will be available down below to copy and paste. Once installed, you'll need to enable WMI polling in Observium by adding a couple lines to the config file. Type in sudo nano slash opt slash observium slash config dot php. And again, this is a set of lines that you should copy and paste, but it defines the domain name, username, and password to connect to WMI supporting devices. This is the global default, but this can also be overridden on a device by device basis. Once installed, I recommend a restart to make sure that WMI is ready to use inside of Observium. Over on the Windows side of things, you'll need to configure a local user to monitor your system. On a domain joined computer, this can be a domain level account. Administrator credentials are not required though. For workgroup PCs and servers, you can set up a local account to access WMI monitoring. Head into Computer Management, Local Users and Groups, right click on the Users folder and select New User. I'm going to name this user WMI Admin, and then we'll go ahead and give it a password. Once created, you'll want to open up the user properties and go to the Member Of tab. Here, you'll add the user to the Distributed Comm Users and Performance Monitor User groups. When you're all done, don't forget to click Apply, and then go ahead and close out of the Properties window. We need to allow the WMI Admin user permission to view the WMI data from outside of the local computer. To do this, click on the Start menu and type in dcomcnfg.exe. Browse to Component Services, Computers, and then right-click on My Computer. In the new window, head on over to the Com tab. Then under Launch and Activation Permissions, click on the Edit Limits button. Here, I'll add in the WMI Admin user and enable permissions for Local Launch, Remote Launch, and Remote Activation. And if everything looks good, click on Apply and then Close Out. For Active Directory joined machines, you'll need to set up the domain user in the same way, along with the same permissions for each machine you want to monitor. However, those permissions can be distributed with group policy rather than having to go to each local machine. Finally, you'll want to head back to Observium in your browser and browse to a Windows device. Head to the Settings cog and go to Properties. Once there, go to the Modules tab and ensure that WMI is enabled. 
If you need to connect using different credentials than the global ones you configured earlier, click on the WMI tab and enter them in here. SNMP does display a good collection of information, but the information that WMI collects will be slightly more accurate for Windows, so I would recommend using this whenever possible. And before we finish, just a quick note on Windows here. Not only is SNMP technically depreciated by Microsoft, but WMI is likely on its last legs as well, at least for ongoing development and support. Instead, they are both being replaced by Windows CIM and a collection of oh-so-user-friendly PowerShell commandlets. Now, I don't see WMI or SNMP being removed from the operating system entirely, but do keep in mind that new features in Windows may not receive support for these monitors. Also, if you'd like to use SNMP version 3 in Windows, there are third-party agents available to do so. However, the majority that I found are annual paid subscription licenses intended for data center customers and legacy holdouts. There is a free and open source agent called Net-SNMP, but try as I might, I could not get it to work after almost four hours of beating my head into my keyboard. So your mileage is definitely going to vary there. So what can you see with Observium and why should you be using it? SNMP, being a fairly standardized protocol, lets you view all critical system stats and make sure your network and hardware are all running the way they should be. When you add a device into Observium, it checks which object identifiers, or OIDs, are available on that device. This can be everything from how many clients are connected to a wireless access point, the memory utilization on your firewall, the traffic on each and every port on a network switch, and what applications and services are currently running, as well as much, much more. Nearly every piece of hardware and software will have associated OIDs that can be queried and logged. The data is all text-based and very small in size, meaning that there's very little, if any, impact on performance or available bandwidth. With a server like Observium, you can review the data in real time to verify network health or use it as a diagnosis tool to find where problems might exist. There are tons of tools out there that offer very similar functionality. I've personally used Cacti and PRTG for years, but they're not nearly as user-friendly to get set up, and PRTG is a paid, closed-source enterprise application. It has some wonderful features, but it's also definitely not for everyone, especially small businesses and home labs. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this subject can get as deep and into the weeds as you want to go, and I haven't even scratched the surface here. But hopefully this is enough for you to get the server set up and running in your environment, as well as your first couple devices configured and monitored. If you want to see some more features with network monitoring, or you have any other specific questions, let me know down in the comments and I'll see what I can do in a future video. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is also down in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Beer for today is from Big Ditch Brewing in Buffalo, New York, and it is the Beer That Tastes Like Beer West Coast IPA. Uh, strangely enough, from about as far east on the coast as you can get. And it's a 7% ABV. Celebrate beer. We love beer because of the diversity of styles that can be produced from the four basic ingredients of malt, hops, yeast, and water. But in a world where it seems like craft beer is increasingly tasting similar, not that we have anything against juicy IPAs and fruited sours, we wanted to shine light on a beer that tastes like beer to keep us from forgetting why we fell in love with craft beer in the first place. Honestly, I have similar aspirations. Featuring huge tropical and citrus aroma and flavor from Mosaic, Amarillo, and Cascade hops used, our take on the classic West Coast IPA style still includes moderate bitterness and relatively clean and crisp finish. Well, a beer that tastes like beer talks the talk, but can it walk like a walk? We'll see. It's certainly a beer. Well, at the very least, it's a beer that looks like a beer. Here's the deal. I don't begrudge them for trying to make a West Coast IPA in New York. Don't begrudge it at all. I've had some phenomenal IPAs from the East Coast. Uh, I mean, you consider The Alchemist and, and a fair number of others. 
are phenomenal beers from that area. But did they succeed in making a beer that tastes like a West Coast IPA? Kinda? I might be a little bit biased towards the West Coast IPAs, and I'm probably being overly harsh with this review, but when I hear huge tropical and citrus aroma and a relatively clean and crisp finish, I'm not getting that from this. The body of this beer is fairly thick, pretty chewy, uh, and honestly, there's nothing bad about the flavor profile at all. It's just, it's not overly complex. There's no evolution whatsoever. I'm hardly getting any tropical notes on the nose, let alone huge tropical citrusy bombs. Uh, it's an alright beer, but it's a far cry from, I think, what they were trying to explain on the can. And I will always mark down points if you can't even hit the style you were aiming for. I mean, I'm still going to drink this one, and I'd be happy to have this on pretty much any summer day. But I don't think it is the return to West Coast IPAs and as big and bold as they tried to claim.